Oh, good morning, people. We're here. Oh, you guys can see me perfect. So, good morning. Today is Sunday, March 26th, right? It's 26th today. So, it's Sunday, it's early morning. I got my Starbucks coffee with no sugar. We ran out. I'm up this early because I'm I'm ready to try another uh, voodoo donut. It's gonna be tough to top the first two, but we do have more to try, and I'm eager to go after it. So let me show you the donuts that are left. So we put them in Ziploc bags. For the meantime, see this is the one that was left over. This is the Oreo. Now this is the ODB, Old Dirty Bastard Donut. That's probably one we're gonna try. Um, this is this one's a maple. Uh, this is the M and M's. How about we try one of these ODBs, Old Dirty Bastard Donuts? For the record, I am not a huge fan of chocolate donuts, but when you add all this extra stuff on top, it doesn't make it just a chocolate donut. It makes it a voodoo donut. Bubba Gump. So I'm waiting for Gustavo. He went to the restroom and we're about to go into Universal Studios. Um, I'll show you.
We survived. Did your makeup survive? We survived. We survived. <laughs> uh, oh, this thing is still spray. <laughs> oh my god. My whole right side is wet. Yeah? Yeah. Your ass is wet. My ass is wet. <laughs> It's not that bad, 25 minutes. It's a possibility you're gonna get wet today, so, you know, just be ready for it. We're not gonna make you sweat. Just be ready. All right, guys, so we have left the theme park behind and we are heading down our movie timeline. Typical urban residential neighborhood. Look at a few of the uh, stars that have visited Brownstone Street over the years. But this next neighborhood we're visiting is even more popular. This courtyard is one of the most frequently used filming locations in the entire world. We call this Portobello Square. You might remember it as Hell Valley. Come back to the The City Hall building on your left was the clock tower in Back to the Future Parts 1 and 2. Now some of you might be saying, wait, that looks different. You're right, it does. Back to the Future was more than 30 years ago. We've used this set hundreds and hundreds of times since then. And we don't want people to see it up on screen and recognize it and realize that they've seen it before. So we constantly change the way that it looks. We got a couple of TV cars to start off with. That is Kit from the 2007 version of Knight Rider. And the Ferrari from the original Magnum P.I. Except that's just a stunt Ferrari. It's not the real thing. It's got a Volkswagen engine and two buggy seats. We've got some of the cars from Back to the Future, Back to the Future Part 2. We have a few of these full-powered cars from the Flintstone, so we've got the future and the past totally covered. If you want to be right up to the minute, we have a few of the uh, hot rods from the past and the furious movies. We've got some off-roaders, some from Jurassic World, some military vehicles from Transformers. Some of these cars work and some of them don't. It can be difficult to tell by looking. We're going to head down into our old Mexico area. We're going to show you how we make it rain in the film industry. It's going to act like it is. Hey, we can be program number four, please. Perfect. Right on cue. We have a little bit of thunder, a little bit of lightning. All pre-recorded. We have some uh, pre-recorded sound effects, some flashing strobe lights, and then we start up our rain. Uh, we use real water for the rain because it's the only way to get the after play. But rain is actually tough to photograph, so we do have to cheat a little bit here. We use extra large raindrops. We space the raindrops out so they'll catch the light as they fall. If you're filming a rainstorm, you want to shine the light through the water. That makes it much more visible. Or you can add something like milk or paint to make the liquid more opaque. The most important thing is, if you're going to go to all the trouble of having raindrops, want to be able to see them. But we don't want to run the water too long because then you can, yeah, we got a flood on it. Cody, Cody shut the water. Oh no, it's too late. We got a flash flood. Look out.
Alright folks, so we just got done eating uh, some lovely dessert. <laughs> Alright, so what did you think? It was so good. It was like such a long wait, but super good. Totally worth the wait. I was very, very happy once I took the first bite. How about you? Me too. I love my churros. Mm -hmm. And my um, horchata iced coffee. I never had this before. Yeah, it's really good. And I got, um... She got the mazapan frap. frap. It's good. I like it. Mazapan freak right here. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Just It's just different. It definitely has the Latino vibe to it. Yeah. And um, there's only two locations and one in California. So hit it up. We, we hit it up. We hit it up. So we got an LA treat. And now... Let's head back to where we started. Nope. Right. Rain check. New place. We're going to Guax. Guac. Oh, yeah, we got to get food. Back at the hotel. See, I got the food. I got me. I got a babe. <laughs> so, yeah, we we're finally back. It's 8 o'clock, around 8 o'clock. Great day so far. All right, guys, uh, we're back in the room, and I'm using my GoPro because my Canon camera is all full with memory, so I have to use my GoPro. But that's why I got a backup plan. So don't worry, I got these guac tacos from Guac. Got three of them. I got a plate of rice. Uh, Maria got a. A huge ass burrito now we didn't expect it to be that big so we're like yeah get us a burrito give us some three tacos but they really hooked us up so um, I'm, I'm about to take this first bite for y'all for y'all the tortillas are freshly made there mm, it's really good look at this mm -hmm. it has guac too of course, you had to throw in some guac because we bought it at guac. Hella guac. Hella guac. Look at this. 